Hey guys, Mark here. Welcome back to the channel. It is a balmy minus 29 this morning in Ontario. And uh, anyways, I just put this little video together here. Uh, I'm going to put this video together. It was requested to me by a viewer and a friend of mine that uh, maybe touch on the fundamentals or the basics of wiring up 24 volt trim. I thought it was a pretty good idea. So I just put a little something together. I'm not very good at in instructional videos. I know that. So I hope this isn't a total flop. But anyways, I appreciate all watching anyways. Um, but after that, pretty exciting stuff. We're going to go down to uh, Mike Winstone's and check out his uh, new uh, uh, Triad V21 project. Uh, Mikey brought this boat back from, I think, somewhere in Tennessee a couple of years ago. And it's kind of been on the back burner while he's been building his business and whatnot. And, uh, but he's finally on it. And if any of y'all know Mikey at all, he builds a mean boat. And uh, this one is his dream boat. He's always wanted one. He's keeping it forever. Uh, so I think it's going to be extra special. So anyways, uh, appreciate you following along. Enjoy. So we're going to touch on 24 volt, 36 volt trim um, and drag boat application today. Now I do have to state that this video is for entertainment purposes only. This is simply how I have chose to wire mine and, and, and added in the protection that I think is needed, but it's not suggestive have to be very careful in how I say that. When you start altering trim speed in a race boat application, a lot of things can go wrong and a lot of things go wrong really fast and it could ultimately cost you a boat. I'm not suggesting you do this. I'm simply showing you how I've done it. So I know there's a lot of confusion. Um, and uh, so I just thought I'd kind of try and break it down and simplify it as best as I can. So the first thing, obviously, in a 24 volt or 36 volt trim application, you're starting with your primary voltage source, your primary volt battery, and for entertainment purposes or visual, I'm a visual learner, so I, I just wanted to make it look as simple as possible. So you've got your battery in your boat, you've got your ground and your power, and they would go to obviously to your to your power distribution center, to your starter, to your motor, your key, and everything works. So this is your primary battery. And there's often sometimes confusion when, when, they, when you need to add that second battery for 24 volt or third battery for 36 volt. So I kind of thought I'd break it down and show you how I go about doing that. And a couple of the basics to remember some fundamentals. So first of all, ground is always ground. That's why they call it a common ground. Um, whether you're on 24 volt, 36 volt, 12 volt, they all share the same ground. It never changes. So just... To simplify things, ground is always just ground. Everything always diverts back to ground. On the voltage side of things, you're placing the batteries in series in order to not necessarily increase amperage, but just increase the voltage to your trim pump. You know when you wanna hook up a set of batteries to a car, you put your negative to your negative, your positive to your positive. At that point, you're hooking up two batteries in parallel. And parallel means that you're doubling the amperage or increasing the amperage, but not, but not altering, altering the voltage. That's fine for boosting or whatnot. But in a 36 volt trim application, 24 volt trim application, you don't wanna increase the amperage. You simply wanna increase the voltage. So here's how I sort of break it down. Ground always goes to ground. Everything leaves the battery from the positive side out. So we're going to introduce our second battery. Um, again, this is just a, another 12 volt, volt freaks battery. Positive, negative. I don't know if it's marked on the battery. It's not. But anyways, you're just going to have to trust me on that. It's a positive and negative. And then I just made up these little jumper cables. Um, these are cheap little ends that I would never use in the real world. But for this purpose, um, this should be fine. So got your main battery in your boat you're going to kill your voltage obviously unhook your battery uh, and you're going to basically take your supply voltage from the positive side of your 12 volt battery everything starts at the 12 volt battery that's where there's always a lot of confusion volt battery or 12 volt positive to the negative side of your secondary voltage battery your 24 volt battery your well it's 
not 24 volt battery, it's 12 volt battery, it's 24 series. Think of Christmas lights, when one bulb burns out and they all go out, that's because they're wired in series. The power is carrying through the battery. It's leaving the positive side of this battery and it's entering the negative side of your second battery. From the positive side of the second battery out to your device, be it your trim, pump trim, solenoids, we're gonna to touch on that. So for reference purposes, I just installed my multimedia here so you can see, I think you should be able to see that to show you simply Again, the ground of my multimeter is going to the ground side of the battery because we talked about that ground never changes. So I apply the, the, the probe here. You see that I got 13 plus on the lithium battery where I can't see it, 13 plus volts. We'll leave the positive side of this battery to the negative side of this battery, the positive side out. Remember to put your meter on your 200 amps or 200 volt scale. You'll see that we have 26.5 volts available to the trim pump. It's really that simple. But here's where it gets interesting too. I've been asked, do I need to supply 24 volts to the solenoid to, or to the trim pump to, to turn it on? And no, you simply don't. You're, 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 the only the primary side of the system is gonna be on 24 volts. Uh, you're still gonna just open and close your solenoid with 12 volts. So. I'm going to back it up here a little bit, simplify things. This is the hard wiring of your primary side of your circuit. You, you've got your common negative, your positive out. This battery supplies your boat and don't worry about it again. Everything else just hooks up here as normal if you're going to add another circuit or whatnot through this battery. That's fine. You simply put a second battery in series, you got 24 volts. If I was to add a third battery for 36 volts, I would do the same thing. I would leave the positive side of this battery to the negative side of the third battery, the positive side out, would you would see 36 volts there at your trim pump or at your solenoids. And that's commonplace too. Again, I'm not recommending um, 24 over 36 or vice versa. There's, there's an application for each one of them, but um, I'm just simply showing you the, the, the basics of, of, of hooking those up. So. so the next thing, we got to look at the solenoids. The, the solenoids are basically, or I say solenoids because I choose to use two. Again, not suggestive. It's just how I do it. And the reason that I do that is because if I can wire two trim solenoids in series like this, and I'll, I'll break this down here in a second. When I apply my voltage here, my, my 36 or 24 volts here, if this solenoid is to weld itself across, if I only have the one solenoid, that's gonna to continue to power the trim pump and there's no stopping it. I let off the trim button or the trim computer shuts off and, and, and that's just spooling up. When you introduce a second solenoid in series that are both turned on with the same switch, when voltage is taken away from here or the, the, the circuit is broken, this can be welded all at once. It still has to pass through here in order to make it to the trim pump. So either one of these solenoids is to weld itself. Once this circuit is broke, voltage is taken away, it ends. So this is basically an electronic safety to prevent a welded solenoid from causing the trim pump to continue to run. I also run a mechanical stop on the trim pump itself, like on the, uh, basically on the motor. I can't, I'm not gonna show you how mine works to limit the amount of trim that can that can happen. So in the case that everything else fails, it can only trim it can only trim so far. Is that going to save it all together? Probably not, but I think in this case you need to introduce as many safeties as you possibly can uh, to assure that uh, that in the incident that something goes bad that you can save your boat. Now, just again, flow path explained. And guys, remember, this is the 24, 36 volt side of things. You're still gonna have a 12 volt, you're still gonna apply 12 volts to your trim pump for your, for, uh, you know, slower trimming or, you know, trimming it up on the trailer and that sort of thing, or, or an additional bump if you need to when you're racing. I'm simply talking about wiring the 24 or 36 volt side. So again, primary battery does its job, provides voltage to the entire boat. From the positive side of the primary battery, battery 
to the negative side of the secondary battery, from the negative side of the secondary battery, I'm sorry, from the positive side of the secondary battery to your solenoid. In this case, I like to run two in series, and from there out to your trim pump. At this point, obviously you've got your common ground. When voltage is applied here, 12 volts, i.e. your trim computer or your, your trim switches on your steering wheel applied here, engages the solenoids and applies a voltage to the pump. I'm not gonna spool it up because I don't want the hydraulic fluid pissing all over the garage, but you sort of get the idea. It's actually very, very, very simple. So guys, that's kind of the easiest way that, that I can explain it or break it down and how I do it. Um, I hope I made it as clear as possible, but I choose again to use two solenoids in series as, a, as an electronics, as electrical safety, the best, the best way that I can describe it. And here's the thing again, because I can't use it. I can't say it as suggestive. I can tell you what I do. I choose to use the best solenoids that I can put my hands on. So these ones I buy from Speedwire, uh, TE make a really good one too. I, I believe, I could be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure that these are five rated at 500 amps continuous. So, I mean, really just a, a very, very good quality solenoid. It's just an area that you can't or try and save. It, it's, it, again, if something goes wrong, it can cost you a boat. So I choose to use the best solenoids that I can put my fingers on. I choose to wire them in series as electronic pr protection. I choose to put a mechanical stop on the actual motor itself so it can only trim so far. And really, ultimately, that's the best you can do. There are also some items available. There's a nice uh, a trim stop uh, available from Brendan Powers um, that's kind of a mechanical electric trim stop combined. Uh, I, ch I'm, I will have one of my new QS1. Um, Anyways, that's that's kind of the easiest way that I can break it down. I hope that I kind of been, I, I hope you found it informative um, and not too confusing. But uh, again, you know, negatives negative leaves the primary battery at the positive side to the negative side of the secondary battery. The positive side of the secondary battery is your now increased voltage, or or be it your with a third battery, thirty six volts. So, anyways, guys, I hope you found this informative. Again, as always, please hit the like, subscribe button. Uh, it's really important on how the algorithm works in all of this. Um, I need to ask you to do that. So, um, and now we're gonna uh, we're gonna jump in the truck and take a run out to Mikey's and uh, and check out this V21 that he's working on because I think it's super cool. So, thank you guys. I did the other trailer so what I'm probably gonna do I'll unbolt that sand it down yeah reprime it and just make it into a tandem yeah yeah rather right than on. rebuilding it all do you mind if we film yeah. oh, it's too nice to know yeah. well and that's why you know I said like it's you know they the cost and get the cost it's gonna be crazy but yeah it's getting there you can kind of see it's weird. Like it's super weird. All this yeah. we had was rotten. All the back there, it's perfectly good. That's that's a huge bonus, eh? You know, so yeah, so the like, nice thing is is basically this step, so this step here is perfect. Yeah. This side here is perfect. This side was completely rotten. Yeah. The pad is pretty much good to about eight feet forward. And then I don't know what it looks like under the deck. Sure, yet. of course, yeah, yeah. But yeah, like it's like the, the, the transom was shot, so like that's easy. Yeah. Yeah. And all this was falling off the back. Yeah. So, so you'll just make a new panel in there and then just glass it back in, right? Yeah. yeah. Try it instead of trying to fill all the holes in the Well, oh, yeah. So I'll, I'll new piece on the back, yeah. fill the holes, a piece of fiberglass over the base, sand that smooth, yeah. and then respray the whole front. Yeah. Yeah. 
and then that way I've got a fresh, Check. no hole, like nothing in it, yeah. just ready to re It'd be cool to re redo this again. You know what I mean? Well, uh, Tom's got the, uh, he's got like the actual yeah. stuff because he's redone his. Yeah. So. Guys used to race these, eh? Yeah. I, yeah, I, I remember seeing some of these. Lake racer, like, you guys name, had a, I don't know,